Hi, my name is Wayne McIntyre. I'm a software developer on the Active Directory team at Microsoft. And I'm Linda Taylor, and I'm also a software developer on the Active Directory team. And we are here to talk about what's new in Active Directory. So Wayne, is Active Directory really dead? No, it's definitely not dead. Uh, we're still making investments to keep our customers productive and secure and give customers a reason to upgrade to the latest version of Windows Server to take advantage of some new Active Directory features. Uh, as you continue to work, your move towards the cloud. Uh, a lot of our customers are in this hybrid configuration, so we want to make sure that the on-premises domain controller stays, stays healthy. Yeah, so let's take a look at the areas that our team has been focusing on. Yeah, so we know that Active Directory has been around for a long time, since the late 90s. Um, a lot of the original design limits are still in place 24 years later. Some of these limits are starting to affect scale issues as AD deployments continue to grow. As a result, we've been investing in looking at how we can remove some of these scale issues. And of course, we always have a focus on security and supportability since the domain controller is a critical role in any on-prem infrastructure. Right. So before we dive into these three areas, let's just talk about some of the functional updates as well. We have a new forest functional level and a new domain functional level, and we haven't had one of those since 2016. We've added that as we have some features that require it. And another thing to note is that when you add a new domain controller to an existing environment, you will also need to be on the latest 2016 functional level. And since we're adding new features, we've had to extend the base schema to support those features. So there's going to be a schema revision once you deploy your first Insider Preview DC or the next server version. These are in schema 89 and schema 90 files, and they're available now if you want to go ahead and take a peek at what's inside. them. Awesome. So let's start with scalability improvements then. I see some DCs on fire. What's that all about, Wayne? Yep. So over the last few years, we have seen an increasing amount of Active Directory challenges in large scale environments. Uh, these are both external customers and some of our own internal environments as well. AD is starting to get pushed to the absolute max, and a lot of these customers want to be able to scale even beyond what they're at today. Uh, so some of the examples include the CPU workload on a DC and our incoming thread pool to handle LDAP requests or KDC requests. We're seeing massive domains with close to 800 plus domain controllers. The size of an individual AD object continues to grow as they want to store additional values on a single AD object. And in general, uh, the database, uh, we're seeing databases in the 600 plus gigabyte range. Uh, there's also new types of environments where the behavior is a lot different, where we have kind of a high churn rate of objects, uh, where they create a bunch of stuff, delete them, create. And, and so some of these are starting to hit some of these limits. Uh, Linda, can you dive into a bit more details about some of these limitations? Yeah, so there's a few reasons why these limitations are happening. And one of the reasons for not being able to store lots of attributes in an object is actually caused by the AD database format. So when you think about how the data is stored in Active Directory database, the AD database is in the ntds.dip file, and it's an ESE or JET database. And on disk, it's actually a collection of a fixed size 8K pages. And it's been that way since about 1999, when we first released Active Directory. In case you didn't know, the ESC database also stores its page size in the header. So you can see there in the blue illustration that the uh, database has CBDB page of 8192, which is 8K. Now, the cool thing is that new domain controllers have 32K pages, which is a lot bigger. And why is it important to have larger page sizes? Well, besides the obvious, to explain the background is that each object in AD has to fit on a single page. So up till now, we can only store an amount of attributes that would fit on the 8K page. And now we have larger pages, we can have more values. Not only that, we also support 64-bit long value IDs. And what is a long value ID and how does that help us? Yeah, so long value IDs help us store large values for attributes. So if you imagine needing to store 
a, a big chunk of data, what we actually do under the covers is we break it up into smaller chunks and we store it off into this long value uh, tree. And then in the actual page that has the object, we just store a long value ID that points back to where the data is. Now, up until now, with 8K pages, we had 32-bit long value IDs. So we could only store so many of them on the page. And then we only have a certain amount of them as well before we run out of the 32 bits. So now with 64-bit, we can have more long value IDs. So we can store a lot more data in the long value tree. And we can also store more of them on the page. Cool. And uh, what about ADLDS? Is it getting these features as well? Yes, so for ADLDS fans, all of this is also supported on ADLDS. Let's talk about how we can unlock this functionality. Now, the 32K pages feature is an optional feature in Active Directory. So when you add new domain controllers, it's not already turned on by default. It's the same as some of our other optional features have been in the past. And it requires that your entire forest is on this new functional level. And one of the other things that will be advertised on the NTDS settings object is the JET database page size. We'll advertise it whether the DC supports 32K pages or not. Also, Linda, how does it work when you add a new DC into an existing environment since they have to replicate with each other and they have different page sizes? That is a really good point. So what actually happens is that the new DC actually pretends that they only have 8K pages. So it runs in compatibility mode uh, until you unlock the feature. And only at that point, it will start to use 32K pages. Now let's just have a look at how you would do it in practice. The 32K pages optional feature can be unlocked using this PowerShell command. This is actually a command that exists for a while. So many of you might be familiar with it. It's just enable AD optional feature. And it will do all these checks underneath the covers. So it will check the forest functional level. It will check that all DCs support 32K pages for you. Yeah, and we have an example here of just enabling that feature. It is a one-way operation. So once you are in 32K page mode, you cannot go back to the 8K simulation mode. Also, we have a new attribute that allows you to search or turn an attribute on any object to see how it's stored in the database. Uh, so you could uh, use the jet get record size attribute and you'll see exactly how that uh, database record shows up. Also, uh, most people are familiar, but we used to have a limit roughly around 1200 multi-values stored on a single object. Uh, but you can see once I've enabled the feature on the right that I was able to add well over 3000 values to a single object. Right, so back to some more scalability challenges. Um, you talked about CPU load and running out of threads at the beginning. So do we have anything to help with that? So one of the biggest limitations AD had in terms of scale is that we're not aware. So customers would buy you know, these 80 core machines or 128 core machines um, and 80 would only see half of your CPUs and not utilize the full processing power of the machine. Uh, now 80 is fully NUMA aware and will use all cores on the machine and all NUMA groups. And this allows you to scale up your DCs to handle incoming workload. Uh, we also felt this change was important enough that we also backported it to server 2022. And uh, we have uh, two great demos on uh, enabling NUMA support and also uh, enabling the 32K pages demo. Great, so now let's move on and talk about security improvements. So the domain controller is kind of the king of the kingdom and is often a subject of attacks because it stores everything in your directory. So security is always top of mind for our team and we are always working to keep up with the latest and keep all our customers secure. So let's take a look at the security improvements that we have. So the first one that we worked on is a joint effort with our Kerberos auth team. Uh, this is a new feature idea they had for our delegated managed service accounts. Um, a lot of large orgs tend to have uh, user accounts with unmanaged passwords that are used to run some service or a scheduled task. These accounts are often weak and subject of attacks. And so we're providing a method in order to delegate these accounts to a more secure GMSA style account. So the general gist of the feature is that it's going to allow migrating of normal accounts used for services to move to a GMSA style account with automated password management. 
The domain of main handles all of this. It links the existing service account to be superseded by these new DMSA account objects. The keys are only accessible by the actual KDC. Uh, you cannot access them over LDAP. And there's also no changes required on the service configuration. So this is all driven by the KDC and AD on the actual domain controller. So you don't have to update your applications to take advantage of the new feature. You just handle it from the DC side. Linda, did you want to cover some of the DC locator improvements? Yeah, so the next topic is DC locator improvements that we've made. DC locator is a component in Windows that helps us find domain controllers when you are logging on or doing some other operations. And we have made some improvements to help of mapping of the domain net BIOS names to DNS names. And this has been done in order to help with deprecating a very old protocol called mouse slots. So by default, we will no longer use mouse slots to map net BIOS names to DNS names. And there is also a group policy that you can see here that you can use to control that behavior. And another thing that we have that helps you is that you can go to the AD Trusts MMC and you can also add manual mappings so that if you want to add a domain that isn't trusted or doesn't have anywhere else, the administrator can go here and it can add a manual mapping. So let's take a look how that actually works and how it used to work. So here you can see, for example, the way that it currently works is if we're looking for the domain called Contoso and we're trying to find its DNS name, NetLogon will first look at its cached information from previous lookups that it's already done. If it doesn't find anything there, it will move on to looking at the information it has about the entire forest and all other domains in the forest. If it doesn't find Contoso there, it will look at the trusts that it knows, specifically the top level names of the trusts. So external trusts, forest trusts, and the direct names that it knows about there. If Contoso isn't there, it will then check whether there's anything in the sign-in sessions on the client machine. And finally, if not, it will go out and use the old NetBIOS way of looking for the domain name. Now, with the improvements, what happens is that the first three steps are the same. So we continue to look in the cache, we still look at the forest, and we look at all the trusts and the top level names. However, next, if it doesn't find anything, it will check the admin configured mappings that you saw there from the screenshot. Uh, and if there's any mapping there that it knows about. If it doesn't find anything there, there is another set of mappings that it can check from the trust scanner. Now the trust scanner periodically runs and it queries the domain controllers of trusted domains and it finds all the naming information. So it is also aware of child domains, for example, that we previously didn't know about. And it will check these mappings as well. And finally, it will still look in the sessions. So if you're interested in having a look more at how all this works, we've also made some demos of these features. So you can go to these aka.ms links and you can check out our demos. So some of the other security improvements we're working on is from the LDAP side. As you know, with AD being such a high value target, a lot of attacks are based on relaying credentials to a domain controller over LDAP. Uh, we have already the technology in place to stop these types of relaying attacks with LDAP signing and LDAP channel binding. However, up until now, they've all been turned off by default and we just recommend that you turn them on. Uh, starting with insider preview domain controllers and VNX, LDAP signing will now be enforced by default and be controllable through a new policy. LDAP channel binding will be set to the when supported setting and we will also require that any request or for confidential attributes be retrieved over an encrypted LDAP connection. Uh, lastly, also on the LDAP client side, we will now always prefer to negotiate encryption when possible. Uh, we've also added uh, channel binding token auditing. Um, so this allows administrators today to start looking for clients that will not support the new defaults. And so they could start addressing those clients and getting them to support channel binding services. So this was added in August of this year for back down level OSs back to 2019. So you can audit your environment for any channel binding token issues that may arise. Also, our sister team that works on Kerberos, uh, they have a number of security enhancements. Uh, so they're going to be supporting SHA-256 and 384. They're also working on a lot of crypto agility stuff. 
So be on the lookout for anything uh, coming up from our Kerberos team. Awesome. So now let's talk about the supportability improvements. Supportability is also really important to us because it helps customers diagnose issues and it helps them run their day-to-day -day businesses smoothly by being able to monitor their workloads on clients and domain controllers. So we've invested a bit of time in adding a whole ton of performance counters. So let's start with the first one's way. Yep, so uh, one of the big gaps we had was uh, LDAP client. Uh, did not have any perp counters. And so um, a lot of our internal environments as well as external have servers that rely heavily on LDAP and they want to proactively monitor uh, LDAP traffic going to and from the DC. And so we've added a bunch of LDAP counters that are now available to use. We also included some DC locator performance counters, much for the same reasons as our larger environments that like to monitor everything and wanted to be able to monitor uh, domain controller counters, both from the client side, so the client sending DC lookup requests, and then also from the DC side to see how many incoming requests they're getting for uh, domain controller lookups. And to finish off the performance counter, load we've also got some lsa lookup performance counters now these ones are helpful in monitoring lookups for names or sids so when an application calls the lsa lookup names or lsa lookup sids api we can now monitor the throughput of those uh, the load of how many of those are going to the domain controller or how many of those are coming in to the specific machine. And we can also monitor the cache size to help adjust that if needed. So the cache size is the name cache locally that we keep. And uh, for some customers, it might be too small. For some, it might be too large. So these performance counters uh, enable us to monitor that. And as with all, we've also created some demos of all these performance counters where we talk through each counter in a bit more detail and we show you how they work. So let's recap. We today talked about the improvements that we've been making in Active Directory and specifically the three areas that we've invested in, that being security, scalability and supportability. And Active Directory is not really dead yet. It's kind of still living and we are still spending some time on it. Also, uh, you could download BNext today and go out and try all these features and deploy an Insider Preview DC in some of your lab and test environments. So we encourage you to do that. We also have a article up with what's new in Active Directory Domain Services Insider Preview. Uh, this is going to be a living article for the next few months as we continue to add and uh, more features reach the insider preview rings for Windows Server. So keep an eye on that. Also, if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can either scan the QR code we provided or uh, go to the AD Tech Takeoff link and there's a survey for you to fill out there. And that concludes our session for what's new in Active Directory. Thank you for joining us today.